Adam and Eve, the genesis of humanity. The story of Adam and Eve is one of the most well-known and influential narratives in the Bible. It tells how the first human beings disobeyed God and brought sin and death into the world. But what does this story mean, and how does it relate to our lives today? I will explore the main themes and lessons of the story of Adam and Eve, and how they reveal God's plan of salvation for humanity. The story of Adam and Eve begins in Genesis 2, where God creates a man from the dust of the ground and breathes life into him. He places him in a garden called Eden, where he can enjoy all kinds of fruits and plants, except for one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warns the man that if he eats from this tree, he will surely die. God then decides that it is not good for the man to be alone, so he creates a helper suitable for him. He brings all the animals to the man, who names them, but none of them is a suitable companion. So God causes the man to fall into a deep sleep, and takes one of his ribs, and forms a woman from it. He brings her to the man, who recognizes her as his own flesh and bone. He calls her Eve, because she is the mother of all living. The man and the woman are naked, but they feel no shame. They live in harmony with God, each other, and creation. They have everything they need and are happy. But then, something goes wrong. In Genesis 3, we are introduced to a new character, the serpent. The serpent is described as more crafty than any other animal that God had made. He approaches the woman and asks her a question, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman replies that they can eat from any tree except for the one in the middle of the garden, which God had forbidden them to touch or eat from, lest they die. The serpent then contradicts God's word and tells the woman that she will not die if she eats from that tree. Instead, he says, her eyes will be opened and she will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman is deceived by the serpent's words. She looks at the tree and sees that it is good for food, pleasing to the eye, and desirable for gaining wisdom. She takes some of its fruit and eats it. She also gives some to her husband, who is with her, and he eats it too. At that moment, their eyes are opened, but not in the way they expected. They realize that they are naked and feel ashamed. They sew fig leaves together to cover themselves. They also hear God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But instead of meeting him as usual, they hide from him among the trees. God calls out to them and asks them where they are. The man answers that he heard God's voice and was afraid because he was naked, so he hid. God then asks him who told him that he was naked and whether he had eaten from the forbidden tree. The man blames the woman for giving him the fruit and indirectly blames God for giving him the woman. The woman blames the serpent for deceiving her. Neither of them takes responsibility for their actions or expresses any remorse. God then pronounces his judgment on each of them. To the serpent, he says that he will be cursed above all animals and will crawl on his belly and eat dust all his life. He also says that there will be enmity between him and the woman and between his offspring and hers. He says that he will crush his head and he will strike his heel. To the woman, he says that he will greatly increase her pain in childbirth and that her desire will be for her husband but he will rule over her. To the man, he says that because he listened to his wife and ate from the tree that God had commanded him not to eat from, he will be cursed along with the ground. He says that he will have to work hard to produce food from it all his life, until he returns to it as dust. God then makes garments of skin for them and clothes them. He also says that since they have become like him in knowing good and evil, he must banish them from the Garden of Eden before they eat from another tree, the tree of life. He says that if they eat from this tree, they will live forever in their sinful state. So God drives them out of the garden and places cherubim, angelic beings, and a flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life. This is how sin entered the world through one act of disobedience by our first parents. Sin is anything that goes against God's rule or character.